Hello everyone, in today's command tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Lua function called message box. Now this sounds like it's not going to be the most exciting thing in the world, but it's actually really, really good as far as coming up with neat ways to allow the user to customize their scenarios after the scenario has already been built. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function. So I'm going to go up to the editor, bring down Lua script console, and here it is. So the message box function is accessed pretty straightforward. We're simply going to type in send edit underscore msg box left parenthesis. So there's two pieces to the message box. The first one is the string that we display saying, are you there? And the second half is going to be the actual type of message box. So if I do it as a version one and I quickly hit run, you're going to notice that it's going to give me OK or cancel. Now, if I come here and say type 2, instead of OK and cancel, I get abort, retry, and ignore. Now, if I want to get a little bit crazier and I wanted to go ahead and use a type 3, I would get a yes, no, cancel button. Now, you can kind of see where this is going. If I do a type 4, I get a yes and no. And, of course, if I do a type 5, I get a retry and cancel. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, that's kind of nice because you could you know, print what item somebody has selected. For example, let me go ahead and get myself an aircraft real quick. I am always a fan of the F-16CM. Do, 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 2008 is the version I always pick. Let's go ahead and do that. Pretty good. I could do something like this. I could say uh, selected, local selected equals. We could go, go ahead and get the function for get selected. Do, 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 get selected, selected unit, selected unit. You got to be careful because I always get that one backwards for whatever particular reason. S-E-L, selected, uh, get selected, selected. I always get this one. Yeah, there it is. We're going to do send edit, selected units, dot units of one. So then I could come in here and I could say dot, dot, dot change out my string and just do selected. Oop, let's see here. Uh, selected is the name of this. Let me just double check to make sure that's working properly before I get too carried away here. All right, let's go ahead and print. Let's make sure it actually got something. Ah, see that worked correctly. And just double check that. Selected type five. Ah, because basically we're trying to pass a table onto it. So if I wanted to do dot name, Hey, there we go. And you can see now it actually can show you exactly what you've selected just like that. So let's go ahead and see why this is so cool. So let's go ahead and change this and say, uh, let's maybe change proficiency, change prof. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, use a yes or no style box. So let's go over to message box one more time. Again, the yes or no version is going to be a type four. Let's go ahead and check it real fast. Make sure everything's working. Good. Now, let's get the response from the user and do something with it. So I'm going to say local, let's say response equals. And then I'll go ahead and print the response so that you can all see exactly what it looks like when you do it. So if I hit run again, press yes. Notice it prints yes. Run it again, press no. So that means we can now say if response equals yes, then, ah, there's a Python, oopsie. We could do something like uh, send edit set unit, and we could say something like name equals selected, side equals test, and then we could say something like proficiency equals four. Let's whoop, make sure you get your symbol is correct. Got it. All right, let's go ahead and test it real fast. Change prof. No, obviously nothing's going to happen because we said no. Run it again, press yes. And I've goofed up with my proficiency. Uh, 9 out of 10 times trying to call a new value. That's going to be the correct name. Selected, selected.name. I actually have to go double check this real quick. Uh, let's see here. I think I always make that mistake. I always have a handy dandy little guide real quick that I keep kind of handy in case I need it. Uh, let's go get that up real quickly. Whoop, I don't want that one. That's a good script too, but it's not exactly the script that I'm looking for. Hey, there we go. Set unit. Uh, just double check to see where I messed up here. I see where I messed up. Let's go ahead and double check that again real quick. I think I see what I did. Let's come down here, change my proficiency. Helps if you spell the word correctly. Hmm. That's a little unusual. Ah, I see it. 
You guys are supposed to shout louder so that I can hear it. Got it. And now if I actually come back to this aircraft, let's go ahead and create another aircraft real fast. See that this one is a regular. This one over here is now an ace. So you can see that that is a spectacular way to go ahead and use that as a way to go ahead and change things in a scenario. You know, you could have it basically say, shall I add SAMs? If you pray, press yes, you could run through a loop and add a bunch of SAMs. You could say, do I want to change proficiency? Do I want to change name? And you could use this message box function to go ahead and kind of zip through and set all those items literally at the beginning of the scenario. Now, if you wanted this to appear when your scenario actually started, what you'd have to do is go up to scenario. We're going to do event editor. We're going to do events, create new event. And I can say scenario has started. And then you can come down here, make sure repeatable is off. Then you could edit triggers. We could add a new trigger down here. We could set it to be a specific time. We could also do scenario is loaded. So we could add that one. There's nothing special to that one. We'll go ahead and add this one in just like this. And then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and make sure that your action now is a Lua script. So in this case, we'll go ahead and create a new one. We'll say send start message box. Perfect. So then we could come down here and we could go ahead and just call the script basically the same way we wanted to before. All right, go ahead and come down here and paste that in. And of course, you put all your code down here for whatever you want. You press OK. And as soon as we start the scenario now, moments later, as soon as you fire everything, you're going to go ahead and get yourself that particular message box that's going to pop up and allow you to pick what you'd like to do in that particular scenario. It's just a really slick method, and it's, like I said, relatively simple to play with. Other than that, um, enjoy.